I'm going to run through the Topaz Denoise AI photography software tool. This is a tool that's designed to reduce noise within your digital photos. I'm not going to go a lot into noise itself, other than to say it often shows up as grain within photos. So this is the Topaz website for Denoise. And you can see on the left here, there's a lot of grain in the photo. So that's typical noise, um, quite often high ISO related noise. And what the software does is it uses machine learning and AI to remove that noise, but try and retain the detail in the photo, as you see in the after section. So I very briefly mentioned that it's because of noise, but what is noise? It's outside of the scope of this video to go through all of the details of noise, but in lots of photos where you need to have um, higher shutter speeds or there's low amounts of light, you effectively have to increase the sensitivity of your camera sensor. Now, the same amount of light is hitting your camera sensor, so increasing the ISO is not changing the amount of light that hits the sensor, but what it is doing is allowing the camera to effectively amplify that signal to then go into the processor of the camera. But what that means is that it often introduces electronic noise into the signal, which shows up as grain. A good analogy is to consider it like your stereo. If you're playing music and you turn the volume up all the way, eventually you'll start to get distortion. It's not that there's distortion in the actual music itself, but once it goes through the amplifier and all of those various things, noise gets introduced and you get distortion. So ISO is not that dissimilar in terms of uh, the, the metaphor. So why would you need a high ISO? You might need faster shutter speeds in order to freeze motion. So things like uh, sports photography. You may not have a lot of light. So you may be taking dimly lit indoor shots, Milky Way shots, cities at night, or it could also be that you're shooting handheld and you need to increase the shutter speed to prevent image blur. So there's some examples of when you might need a high SO and subsequently where noise may be introduced into your photo. So now I'm gonna go into the software and this is the denoise interface. On the center, or slightly left to center part of the screen is where we open our image. So I'm gonna click on open an image and I'm gonna to browse to one of my images. So in this case, I have a photo of a night twirler that's got a little bit of noise. Now, over slightly to the top right, you'll see a drop down box and that is the percentage of zoom. So I'm gonna change that to 100%. And you can see in this photo here that there's a lot of noise around this centerpiece and the flame as well. So that drop down box, you can also change to 200% or 400% to zoom in and see a lot more of the noise. I'm gonna leave it at 200% because for me, that's quite useful. In terms of the interface, up the top right, you'll see the navigator, which shows you where you are in the photo, and you can click and drag on that box to move around, or you can do the same within this centerpiece. There's also auto brighten preview, there's the model, and down to the bottom right, or just under center bottom right, you'll see there's a section called automatically update preview. Now I've got that turned off because I find that easier for myself, but you may want to have that on. I believe it defaults to on. What this does is when you change one of the settings, it'll automatically update and show that updated setting uh, and what the impact is on the image itself. Now I might want to change more than one at a time and then see what happens once I've done that. So I turn that off. What that means is you can change each of these, 
but nothing will happen to the photo until you click on update preview. So now we'll get into some of the detail of the actual program itself. You'll see here where I've got the mouse, it says select a model. And there are two options. There's Denoise AI and AI Clear. These models do slightly different things. So it is worth going through to see in which one will work for you. But the main difference between the two is that AI Clear is not quite as aggressive in Denoise. And AI Clear will also try and add some sharpening and enhance details. So if you've got a photo that only needs a little bit of noise reduction, perhaps not a night photo, then AI Clear might work better for you compared to Denoise. This is going to depend entirely on your photos, so it is worth um, trying to see how it works for you. But both of these models are within Denoise AI. So the focus of this video though is on Denoise AI. So I'm going to show you what this does. So as we mentioned, you can see in this photo that there's a lot of noise, especially around the, the flame and this centerpiece. What we want to do is we want to increase the amount of noise that it's going to remove. This is a slider that can be considered almost like the aggressiveness of what it's doing. So one is effectively going to be as aggressive as it can be. Zero is not at all. It's effectively not doing anything. So Topaz would recommend that you don't go to 100% because you might start to see some artifacts introduced. So basically you just slide this across until you're happy with where it's at. Now for the purpose of this photo, I'm going to go pretty aggressive just so you can see the extreme differences. So I'm going to remove a effectively as much noise as I can. I'm going to increase the sharpness and I'm going to recover details. So as I mentioned, because I've got automatically update preview turned off, I now need to click on update preview. This is now going to process and it's removed a lot of the noise. Now, how do I know it's done that? I can remember what the photo was before, but there's also a handy little uh, button up here called split. Now if you click on split, the left hand side is the photo before, the right hand side is the photo after. So if you drag this across, you can see that it has removed a lot of noise. And this um, necklace then is a good example. So the left hand side is where the noise was or the original image, the right hand side is after. So that's done a lot more, but let's see what else we can do. So I'm going to put everything aggressive and we're going to try again. So you can see it doesn't make as much difference because it's effectively noise is the issue with this. Um, and as I was saying, you kind of want to be careful on um, how much noise you're removing and how crazy you're having the software work. Um, I'm going to try again, and this is 0.89 as that setting. So you can see left hand side noise, right hand side the edited version. So now remember this is 200%. So I'm going to go back to 100% and we're going to have a look again. So, oh, sorry, we may need to actually update preview again. Yeah, that's better. So you need to, when you, because automatically update isn't turned on in this case, you may need to click on update preview when you change zoom. Now you can see on the left hand side is the noisy version, on the right hand so side is the denoised version. So that is quite a significant difference between the two original photos and it has retained a fair amount of the information within it. One of the criticisms of a lot of denoise programs is that they effectively more or less reduce the clarity within a photo and in doing so it removes the details. But I can see pretty well that that's not 
what's happening here. So if I'm happy with this photo, then what I wanna do is go down to the bottom right and click on save as. In this case, I'm gonna save it as a TIFF just because that's what I had it as before, but you could change it to JPEG, um, PNG, DNG, whatever you need. Um, this is the path that it's been saved as, and over here is the name it's gonna be saved as. You'll see there's dash denoise at the end, and I'll show you in a minute how we can change that. Compression, bit depth, um, color profile, and then we just click on save. And that's now going to start processing the photo, and it will then save that. Now it's important to note with all of these AI tools that you will get the best performance out of these when you use a compatible graphics card. Artificial intelligence is fairly computationally heavy, and what that means is that graphics cards work much better than uh, CPUs. You can still use a CPU, but it won't be nearly as effective. So what you can do is if you go into File and Preferences, you'll see there's a Processing Mode, and this is on, in my case, GPU. If yours is on CPU, it'll still work, but I would expect it to be significantly slower. If it's on GPU and you've got a compatible graphics card, then your performance should be much better. You can also change the allowed um, graphics memory consumption here. Obviously, the more memory you allow it to use, the faster it'll be. Um, also, as I mentioned in the save section, it's got denoise at the end. You can change that here. So this has now saved that image and that's ready for me to work on later on. Now, I mentioned earlier that um, there are two models. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this image and I'm gonna open the original again. And what we're gonna do, we're at 100%, we're gonna change this to AI clear. So I'm gonna put it on high Increase sharpness high, and we'll set recover details to 0.6. Update preview, and this is now gonna try and process. And you can see the left-hand side is the unedited, the right-hand side is the edited. If I wanna save this, click on save as. It'll say denoise at the end, but I'm gonna say Denoise hyphen AI. Denoise hyphen AI clear. Just so I know which one is which. I'm going to save that. It'll process it and then save that file that's then ready for processing in whatever other software you use. Or you could just upload it to social media if it's a JPEG, for example. So I'm going to show a quick photo with the difference between the AI clear and the denoise version. What you would often do once you've finished this is then start to edit it in other programs. One really useful tool is AI Sharpen. So you can take the denoised photo and then edit that in AI Sharpen. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel, click the bell if you want to be notified for more videos and um, feel free to ask any questions in the comment. I'll be doing a few more videos on the other AI programs within the Topaz suite. So stay tuned and hopefully you enjoy those. Thank you.